is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. You're about to see the Communist Party's complete disregard for human rights as they affect their plan of sabotage. You sent for me. I'm Herb. Oh, yes, come in. I'm Alan Dixon. Well, hello. That's my daughter, Herb. Very hello. nice to meet you. Thank you. The pleasure's all ours. Would you like this for your lapel? I think they're awfully pretty. Well, thank you very much. All right, now, darling, you've had a chance to meet Mr. Philbrick. Why don't you go in the other room? We have some important things to discuss. All right, Daddy. I hope I'll see you later, Mr. Philbrick. Well, I hope so, too. Well, that's certainly a charming little daughter you have, comrade. Oh, yes, I'm very proud of her. But then I shouldn't boast to you. I only have one child to bring up. As a matter of fact, none of the reasons I selected you. Selected me for what? Please sit down. Thank you. My job is to make American children more receptive to communism. I travel all over the country doing that. Uh, during my visit here in your area, I hope to be able to set up a section devoted to this kind of work. Checking the files, I saw that your party record was excellent, that you were a first-rate advertising man, and, and also that you had children. I need a man with just such qualifications. Well, I don't have to tell you how pleased I'll be to work with you. What is it you want me to do, comrade? To begin with, I want you to prepare an analysis of the informational media most effective in influencing children. Mm hmm I might be able to do a better job if I knew a little bit more about the project as a whole. You're not ready for that information yet, comrade. How do your children feel about communism? Oh, I've kept them completely in the dark as to my party membership. Oh? Well, I haven't trained them as communists because little girls are not exactly notorious for being discreet. A few slips of the tongue and my party membership wouldn't be much of a secret, would it? I'm going to ask you a favor, Philbrick. Beth usually travels all over with me, but we've just finished a long trip, and now I've been called out of town suddenly over the weekend. I hate to put her under the strain of having to go back and forth with me. Could you possibly take care of her for me? Well, I don't know. Still, I don't see why not. Well, I could ask one of several of the other comrades, but, well, they have no children, and I think Beth misses people closer to her own age. I'd appreciate it very much, comrade. Well, we'll be glad to have her. I'm sure the little girls will enjoy it, too. Good. There's just one thing. I want you to impress on Beth that my party ties are a complete secret. She's not to discuss them with anybody. Oh, of course. I'll tell her. I'll read this while you're waiting. We've just put it out. Youth, crime, and poverty. Thanks. Well, Daddy? It's all right. Now you know how to act. Get as much information as you can, but don't get caught doing it. If there's anything peculiar about his party activities, I want you to find out what it is. I always did what you wanted before, didn't I, Daddy? Yes, darling. And I know you will this time, too. Oh. Well, we're all ready. Thank you for letting me stay with you, Mr. Philbrick. I know I'm going to love it. Well, we're going to love having you. And I'm sure I'll enjoy playing with your little girls, too. Bye, Daddy. Goodbye, darling. Let's go, Mr. Philbrick. Here we go. You wait here, sweetie. I've got to make a telephone call. All right. Don't worry about me. Hello? 
Well, yes, Herb. Darling, uh, I haven't got time to explain right now, but uh, is grandmother still there? Yes. She's in the kitchen having a bite with the kids. She'll be leaving in about a half an hour. Well, look, ask her if she'll please take the kids down to the country with her for the weekend. Well, we have to look after the child of a friend of mine. Yeah, a business friend. I understand. I'll take care of it. But give me a little time to get them packed and into the car. Thanks, darling. Better call Daniels, too. Let the FBI know you're in on the commie youth program. To eat? Uh, just as soon we went on. I can't wait to meet your little girl. Well, I'm afraid we've got a disappointment. Mrs. Philbert just told me they've gone to their grandmother's for the weekend. Oh. Okay, then I guess we can eat. I'm pretty hungry after all. Good. Hi, darling. And you must be our little house guest. That's right. My name's Beth Dixon. Well, you know, Mr. Philbrick didn't tell me you were such a pretty little girl. Thank you, Mrs. Philbrick. You're very kind. I'm very sorry that all your daughters are out of town. Well, they're not all away. Connie's upstairs, Herb. She took a tumble down the steps and turned her ankle. The doctors put her to bed. No kidding. Is it bad? No, she'll be up and around in no time. But in the meanwhile, she has to rest. Well, I'll be able to keep her company. I know lots of stories and games. Well, that's very nice of you, Ben. Well, let's, let's go see her, huh? How do you feel? Pretty good, now that you're here, Daddy. Uh, you always know how to say the right thing, don't you? Connie, this is Beth. Beth's gonna stay with us for a few days. Oh, that's swell. And I'll stay with you all the time, Connie. Then you won't be thinking about that sprained ankle. Thanks, that would be wonderful. Could she sleep on my other bed? No, mm -hmm. we'll see. Sit down, Beth. Have you ever sprained your ankle? It sure hurts. Only for a little while. I'm sorry it happened, but I'm glad you're home. Well, I've got an appointment, darling, so I'll be back in a little while. Okay, Dad. Meanwhile, Beth can tell me all about herself. I'd love to. I'll see you all later. I'll go down with you. Bye, kids. This Beth, she seems so sweet. Is it all an act? I don't know. She's the daughter of a party bigwig. She's been surrounded with doctrine all her life. I suppose some of it's rubbed off on her. Then maybe I shouldn't have kept Connie home. Maybe I should have sent her in spite of what the doctor said. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. Beth's been told not to discuss party business while she's here. Let's just hope she's well disciplined. If not? Well, if not, we'll just have to do some explaining to Connie, which I don't even like to think about. Well, I gotta go. On my way to the FBI, they're showing considerable interest in Dixon and his daughter. See you. Bye bye. up Dixon's trail, but he's an expert at eluding surveillance. Any idea what he's up to? Not completely. We've had a lot of reports on this commie children's program, but we don't have the whole picture yet. Yeah. Is Dixon in charge? At the moment, I think so. Whatever you can get on him, who you went to see and why, would be a big help. Yeah. What about that analysis he wants? Well, like always, make a carbon copy for us. Do you think the little girl will be any help? I'll see what I can do with her. I'll be careful of her. Yeah. I know, never underestimate a commie, even a baby one. Well, that's the idea, all right. Anything else? Well, not for now, Herb. 
See ya. And so George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and all those others, they didn't really care about starting a new country. All they wanted to do was to make money for themselves. And they didn't worry about how many poor people were being killed while they did it. But everyone I know says they're great men. That's what they tell you in school. Because even today, poor people are being killed so rich people can make more money. That doesn't sound right to me. Did your daddy ever tell you the truth about these people like Washington? My daddy always told me what wonderful things they did. I see. Well, you just read this and you'll understand a lot of things. The real American heroes. What's it about? It's all about how people have been telling you lies since you were a baby. Are you sure your daddy never explained it to you? I don't think I understand you, Beth. Well, you just read that, and you'll understand a lot of things. What's that? Can I see it? Sure. Here, Daddy. Oh. Uh-huh. Looks interesting. Mind if I keep it and look it over? You can tell me all about it, Daddy. Hmm. Beth, there's some things in the car. I was wondering if they were yours. I didn't leave anything in the car. Well, uh, let's go down and see, huh? All right. What did you want to talk to me about, Mr. Philbrick? I couldn't help overhearing some of your conversation with Connie, Beth. You're pretty well informed. My father made sure of that. Uh-huh. Your father is a very capable man. By the way, these pamphlets, who writes them for him? I don't think I ought to tell you that. Well, I know all about it anyway, Beth, but suit yourself. You don't know about it. Nobody knows about it except my father. Why are you lying to me? Lying's a pretty strong word, Beth. I'm sorry. Come here. You knew my party membership was a secret, didn't you? It shouldn't be a secret from your own family. Yeah, but nevertheless it is, and you knew it. And yet you talked to Connie the way you did. You gave her this pamphlet. She's not trained the way you are. If she said the wrong thing to the wrong people, my usefulness to the party would be ruined. But you should train her. The party will decide that, Beth. In the meantime, I forbid you to talk about party business. I don't think I like you, Mr. Philbrick. Well, I'm just awfully sorry about that, but it happens that my party work is a little more important than your likes or dislikes. I don't think you really care about your party work. I don't think you really care about communism. There's something funny about the way you act, something funny and dangerous. And by the time my father gets back, I'm going to know what it is. <laughs> Haven't you finished yet, darling? Just a little while longer. I'm sorry to keep you awake, but the secret room's out as long as that junior commissar is in the house. the minds of American kids. See that Daniels gets this in the morning.
What is it, Beth? I want to apologize for last night, Mr. Philbrick. That's all right, honey. It's all forgotten. I believe in communism so much that I often do foolish things. My father tells me that, too. Sir. I'm glad I caught you. Why? What's wrong? Oh, the incinerator again. The draft. I can't light it. Uh -huh. Do you think you have time to look at it? Yeah. Everything all right, Mr. Pilbrick? Yeah, fine, honey. I'll be back after a while and we'll talk some more, huh? Where are you going now? Business. Where was Daddy going? Oh, he had a business appointment. I saw you take an envelope out of the car. Me? An envelope? I saw you. Out of the glove compartment. Then you hid it behind you when you were talking to him. I didn't hide anything. This? It's just a letter I forgot to mail yesterday. Oh? Excuse me, sir. Could you tell me the way to Fredericksville? Uh, I've got a map right here. Thanks. You can keep it if you like. Herb, your report isn't here. It's got to be. Look again. No, no, it isn't. You better check your car. Whoa. I don't know where to check. Unless I might have left it at home. You better go back there and look for it. Right away. Yeah. If that report gets to the commies, it could mean you're through. Not only as a commie, but maybe every other way, too. Glove compartment of the car. See if anything's missing. Something's missing, all right. Did you find it? Connie just told me she saw Beth take an envelope from there this morning. Of course. While I was at the incinerator. What was it, Herb? Something the party wouldn't particularly approve of. Is Beth around? No, she's disappeared. That little devil's probably taken it to the Kremlin by now. Herbert Philbrick? That's right. I just come from Martin Dixon. He's back in town and wants to see you right now. Tell him I can see him this afternoon. Better come now. It's urgent. Oh. I imagine he wants that analysis I prepared, doesn't he? I wouldn't know. It's in the house. I'll have to get it. I'll get it for you, Herb. All right, darling. It's in my briefcase in the hall. Has Comrade Dixon seen his daughter Beth since he got back? I wouldn't know that either. Hmm. Here, Herb. Thanks, darling. When will you be back? Oh, I don't know. This shouldn't take long, should it? I haven't any idea. Come on. But I'll follow you just to make sure you get to the hotel. Last time you visited here, you left with a little package of dynamite. This time you'll be lucky to leave it all. Who's there? Herb. Sit down, Philbert. Hello, Beth. Have you done the analysis I've asked for? Him? Uh, yes, I've got it right here. Give it to me. favorite commie game. There's that old military maxim, a good offense is the best defense. You've done an excellent job. Thank you. But I'm afraid I have some unpleasant news. A copy of that report was stolen. Much as I hate to say so, I'm convinced that it was Beth who stole it. Tell Comrade Herb what you told me. 
I told my father just what you did. How you made a phone call to warn your family about me. How you acted when you found out your little girl Connie was going to be exposed to me. How she had no training at all. Not even in the most basic principles of communism. Does she have your permission to talk to me like this? I most certainly do. Because you're a spy. I heard you working secretly all night. And then this morning you were going off to a mysterious meeting. And with what? With this. You were going to give it to someone besides Daddy. You mean to say you knew all along that she'd stolen a party document from me? Stole Philbrick? She obtained evidence to back up her charges. What charges? Making a copy of a party document is a serious offense, comrade. I made that carbon with every intention of destroying it as soon as I was sure you'd gotten the original. It was my way of making sure that my party work wouldn't be wasted. I may have made a mistake, comrade, but it's nothing to the mistake you've made. Just what do you mean by that? As long as that document was in my hands, it was safe. It certainly wasn't safe in the hands of a 12-year-old child. I'm not a child. Her ridiculous behavior may very well have endangered my whole secrecy as a communist. I'll go before the review board any time with you, comrade, and we'll let them decide who's in danger of the party more. I, by making a temporary copy of a report, or you, by placing an irresponsible child in my home to spy on me, to steal my papers, and then to make wild, unfounded charges. Goodbye. Comrade. Yeah? Perhaps you're right. I would prefer this matter doesn't go before a board of review. But I intend to clear myself of these charges. There are no charges, Philbrick. I withdraw them. Daddy! Leave us, Beth. But, Daddy! I said leave us. I'm under constant pressure, Philbrick. Sometimes it becomes a little bit too much for me. I would rather not have to defend myself in front of our superiors. I'll forget this incident, if you will. All right. First thing to do is to get rid of that carbon. That's that. No, not quite. I like this very much. I'm going to give you a bigger part in my project. I'm not sure I want it now. Forget your personal feelings, Philbrick. This is for the party. They're the plans for a secret publishing company in this area designed to produce material for children. Take them with you. Study them. And I'll contact you later. Thanks. And don't be too hard on Beth. You're right, you know. She's just a child. That was as close as you'll ever want to come, Philbrick. As long as you're okay. Got something else for you. That's a complete plan of Dixon's operations in this whole area. Get it back to me. Good work, Herb. We'll have it back for you in an hour after we photograph. All right. And so Washington, Jefferson, and Hamilton, and the other great patriots founded this country so that all men could be free and equal. That's the way they taught it to us in school, Mommy. And don't you ever forget it, darling. Hi, Daddy. Hi, honey. Are you all right, Herb? Yes, yeah, sure, I'm fine. Go on, don't let me interrupt you. Oh, we we're all finished for today. I just had to make sure that everything Beth Dixon told me was lies, and they sure were. Mommy said she isn't coming back here anymore. That's right. I'm glad. I didn't like her very well. I feel sorry for her. Sorry? Yes. I don't know why. It seemed to me that even though she was smiling all the time, she didn't really mean it. It seemed to me she was a sad little girl. Don't you feel sorry for her? Yes, darling. Now that you mention it, I... I guess I do feel sorry for her.
Discrediting Beth Dixon was one step in the free world's never-ending struggle to prevent the development of a future generation of communists. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick. The kind of story that could only be told by a man who for nine fantastic years served as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs>